Hi, Matthew here, and I'm going to be talking you through this Leaving Cert Maths question. Let's get into it. We're going to look at question two, which is a 30 mark question on complex numbers. So question two, part A, gives us an equation. Z cubed plus AZ squared plus 30Z plus B is equal to zero. And we're told that two and one minus five I are roots of this equation. So question A, part one, is worth five marks. And this wants us to write down the third root of the equation. So we have our first two roots, two and one minus five I. So in an equation like this, we should have one real root and our one real root here is two. And what I mean by real is that it's a real number. And then we have one minus five I as one of our imaginary roots. And we know it's imaginary as it has an I. So it should have two imaginary roots. So if the first imaginary root is one minus five iota, the second imaginary root will be the conjugate of this. And just to remind you what the conjugate is. So if we have a complex number, Z is equal to A plus B iota, then the conjugate of Z is A minus B iota. And to denote a conjugate, we just put that bar above the Z. So we have our imaginary, one of the imaginary roots here in one minus five iota. So the conjugate of that is gonna be one plus five iota. And that's our answer for A part one. And now we're gonna look at A part two of the question. And this is worth 10 marks. So here we have to find the value of A and the value of B. So to do this, I'm gonna use my three roots, two, one minus five iota and one plus five iota to form another equation. And then I'm gonna put it equal to the equation at the top. And then wherever A is, whatever number is in place of A in my new equation and whatever number is in place of B in my new equation, they'll be my values for A and B. So we have one of our roots and that's obviously two. So that means that Z is equal to two which means that z minus two is equal to zero is a factor, or just z minus two is a factor. But then to form an equation with the two other roots, the two imaginary parts, we're going to use the following rule. And that's that z squared minus some of the roots z plus product of the roots will give us a quadratic from the two other roots. So if I find the sum of the imaginary roots and the product of the imaginary roots, then I'll have my equation, and then I'm gonna multiply that by z minus two, and then put that equal to the equation we're given in the question to find a and b. So first of all, we find the sum of the roots. That's going to be one plus five i plus one minus five i. So five i will cancel with five i. And then we're left with one plus one, which is just two. So the sum of the roots is two. And now the product of the roots is going to be one plus five i times by one minus five i. So one by one is obviously just one. One by minus five iota is minus five i. Five i by one is plus five i. And then five i by minus five i is minus 25 i squared. And just in case you forgot, i squared is equal to minus one. Just make sure to know that. So here, minus five i will cancel with plus five i, and the i squared will go to minus one, which will give us one minus 25 times by minus one. So then we get one minus 25 by minus one, which gives us one plus 25, which is equal to 26. So therefore the product of the roots is 26. So now we have our quadratic equation from the two imaginary roots, that's z squared minus two z plus 26. And now I'm gonna multiply this by z minus two, which is the other factor. So now multiplying this out, we get z by z squared minus two z plus 26. And that's gonna give us z cubed minus two z squared plus 26 z. And then minus two by z squared minus two z plus 26 gives us minus two z squared plus four z minus 52. And now adding like terms together, we get z cubed minus four z squared plus 30 z minus 52. So now we're gonna put this equal to the equation that we had at the start, which means it's equal to z cubed plus az squared plus 30z plus b. So we know that these equations match up as the z cubed and the 30z are both in the same place and we got those both times, which means that the minus four is in place of the a and minus 52 is in place of the b, which means a is equal to minus four and b is equal to minus 52. So they're both of our answers for a part two. And now we're gonna move on to the final part of the question, which is part B, and this is worth 15 marks. So using de Moivre's theorem, we have to show that sine three theta is equal to three sine theta minus four sine cubed theta. So to do this, we're gonna do de Moivre's theorem on one side and then multiply it out as we normally would on the other side. So if we have cos theta plus i sine theta cubed, using de Moivre's theorem, this will give us cos three theta plus i sine three theta. So that's using de Moivre's theorem. So now I'm gonna multiply it out as I normally would on the other side. So I'm gonna switch these around. So that means it's equal to cos theta plus i sine theta by cos theta plus i sine theta plus cos theta by i sine theta. 
I always find it's best to multiply out the first two brackets on the right hand side here and then whatever answer you get multiply that by the third bracket it takes a while there's a lot of steps but it's not too bad and it's just very easy to make a mistake so I recommend just taking your time and going through this slowly to limit your chances of making an error the left hand side will always stay the same as we have to use the Marvel's theorem to show that sine 3 theta is equal to 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cube theta and the left hand side there is using the Marvel's theorem the right hand side is just multiplying it out as we normally would so first of all, cos theta by cos theta plus i sine theta is going to give me cos squared theta plus i cos theta sine theta. And then i sine theta by cos theta will give me plus i sine theta cos theta. And I'm going to rewrite that as plus i cos theta sine theta. It's the exact same thing. Let's make it easier for us later on. And then i sine theta by i sine theta is going to give me plus i squared sine squared theta. And that's going to be multiplied by cos theta plus i sine theta. So now multiplying that out. So now we can make this a bit easier for ourselves and we can say that i cos theta sine theta plus i cos theta sine theta is the same thing as two i cos theta sine theta. So now we only have three terms to multiply out rather than four. Sorry, I forgot to write in the three theta there. Just be careful, it's sine three theta. So that's gonna give us cos three theta plus i sine three theta is equal to. So cos square theta by cos theta plus i sine theta is gonna give me cos cubed theta plus i cos square theta sine theta. 2i cos theta sine theta by cos theta plus i sine theta is going to give me 2i cos square theta sine theta plus 2i squared cos theta sine squared theta. And remember here we have an i squared. So here we have i squared sine squared theta, but remember that i squared goes to minus one. So that means that's just minus sine squared theta. I've written that as minus one sine squared theta, but it's the same thing. So then we get minus sine squared theta by cos theta. It's going to be minus cos theta sine squared theta. And finally, sine squared theta by i sine theta is going to give me minus i sine cubed theta. So our next step now is to work out whether it's the real parts we have to put equal to each other or the imaginary parts that we have to put equal to each other. So the third of the question, we're asked to show that sine 3 theta is equal to 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta. And the sine 3 theta on the left is imaginary as it has an i. So I'm going to underline all the imaginary parts on both the left and the right hand sides. So obviously we have the i sine 3 theta. We have the i cos square theta sine theta. We have the 2i cos square theta sine theta. Now be careful here. We do have an i, but it's an i squared. And remember that i squared goes to minus 1. So that won't be imaginary as that will just be minus one times two. So that's going to be minus two cos theta sine squared theta. So that's not imaginary to so be careful there. And then finally, we have minus i sine cubed theta. So now I'm going to put all these imaginary parts equal to each other. So that sine three theta is equal to cos squared theta sine theta plus two cos squared theta sine theta minus sine cubed theta. So we can add together the cos squared theta sine theta with the two cos squared theta sine theta to give us three cos squared theta sine theta. So now I'm going to use a trigonometric rule next. You may know this rule, but if you don't, it's in the log tables on page 13. So it's the very first formula on the right hand side of the page. So that's cos squared a plus sine squared a is equal to one, where a is any angle. So in our case, it's just theta. So we're going to use this now to help us show what the question is asking us to show. So remember, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, which means that cos squared theta is going to be equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So now I'm going to substitute in 1 minus sine squared theta for cos squared theta in my equation. So then multiplying 3 sine theta by 1 minus sine squared theta gives me 3 sine theta minus 3 sine cubed theta. And we still have the minus sine cubed theta from before. Now we have minus 3 sine cubed theta minus sine cubed theta so that'll go to minus 4 sine cubed theta which gives us sine 3 theta is equal to 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta and this is what the question wanted us to show at the very start so we've used de Morvan's theorem to show that sine 3 theta is equal to 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta so that's the last part of the question and the end of the video so thank you very much for watching and i hope i helped